to be joined here by such distinguished officials and advocates, all who are making a positive difference in this effort to raise awareness of the dangers of opioid addiction and the increase of opioid overdoses in Connecticut. In the legislature last year, we worked in bipartisan fashion to create new laws to address the issue on a variety of fronts. Public Act 19-159 prohibited users from denying coverage for substance abuse services and prescribed treatment drugs solely based on that those services were provided under a court order. Public Act 19-191 requires pr practitioners who prescribe an opioid drug with more than a 12-week supply to establish a treatment agreement with the patient or discuss a care plan for chronic opioid drug use. And Public Act 19-38 classified fentanyl as a narcotic, which means a person convicted of selling it now faces longer prison sentence. Absolutely. While our work is ongoing here at the State Capitol, today we are spreading the message that the tragedy of overdose death is preventable. We seek to reduce the stigma around overdose death. We pay tribute to those we've lost, just as with the signature sculpture. I want to give uh, a, an example, one that uh, has touched me personally. Almost uh, nine years ago, I lost a good friend. And for those of you who know, you know, I'm a, uh, an engineer, an executive at a, a water company. I've been there since uh, 1992. And that uh, water company had a mentoring program. And I brought in a mentor, a kid, uh, in the early 2000s who suffered from drug addiction. And he was in a uh, juvenile sort of uh, halfway house in Bridgeport. And he loved music. And he knew that I did music on the side. And he wanted me to uh, mentor him. And I brought him into my home, brought him into my home uh, studio. And he made what's called uh, uh, instrumental music, uh, also known as uh, beats for uh, local rap groups. He was in his late teens. Through me mentoring him, him doing what he loves, trying to set a path forward as far as a career. He worked his way and, and, and ultimately became a member of the Carpenters Union Local 24. My friend, mentee, William Gullivan II, formerly of West Haven, lost his battle to drug addiction. He died on December 29th, 2011. And I remember like it was yesterday, I felt like I was partially at fault because I thought that he overcame his drug addiction. I thought he was on his way. My communications with him over time, over the almost 10 years that I've known him, uh, became longer and longer. First I would talk to him every day, then it was every week, then it was every month, then it was every six months. I thought he was on his way. I knew he was part of the, the Carpenters Union. Next thing I know, he died of a drug overdose in a local community park, not far from his home in West Haven. Young children found him by himself in the woods. And it is something that I feel honored to be able to mention his name today. William, we called him uh, Ed Gullivan II. Because he was a person of a good soul, kind person, very loyal. But this addiction, drugs, heroin, fentanyl, has done a number in our community. So we must always remember those that we love, that are alive today. We are not alone. They are not alone. We are talking about whether it's in the rural part of Connecticut, suburbs, or in our urban areas. Throughout our entire state, this epidemic needs to be talked about, needs action on a regular basis. Today is a, is a, is a great day in terms of international overdose awareness. But we need to make sure that we are aware of this issue every day and that we act uh, accordingly.
Now we have a number of, uh, of speakers here uh, with us. Uh, I'd like to, uh, at this point, uh, invite.